Hello and welcome to the Coach Me Vancouver podcast. My name is Nadine Stiller and we're recording live from downtown Vancouver. We are the one-stop community space for you to meet and book your local coaches who will help you thrive and take your life, career or organization to the next level. guest today is Joanna Lee. Joanna is a certified professional co-active coach and a talent development coach. Her life purpose is to fearlessly inspire others to lead fulfilling lives. She believes that inside everyone there is a fire to be ignited. She helps people find their own fire, empowering them to break free from self-limiting beliefs so that they can show up in the world as their most authentic selves. Nothing gives Joanna more happiness than seeing someone glow with clarity, confidence and purpose as a result of her help. Joanna is living her dream of spending most of her waking hours doing something that she truly loves. Check out coachmevancouver.com forward slash book to connect with Joanna for a free initial coaching session. All client stories mentioned in this podcast have either been approved for use or been altered to not be identifiable. In today's podcast, we learn how Joanna fearlessly inspires others to lead their fulfilling lives. We find out how self-limiting beliefs, hidden fears and playing small can hold you back from achieving your goals and happiness. Joanna shares how and which clients inspire her every single day. And we find out about Joanna's Velvet Fist coaching approach. Yes, you heard that correctly. Hello, Joanna. Hi, Nadine. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. I'm excited to be here. Perfect. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for your time today. I know you had a, a, a full day of, um, at work, so um, you're still smiling and beaming though. Yes, which is, which I'm is just really happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. So I am a certified professional co-active coach and uh, I love my job. I love helping people find their purpose. I love seeing them step into their best selves and overcoming their self-limited beliefs. And as a coach, I help them get to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is very exciting. Perfect. So what's your, what's your coaching story? How, how did you come to be a coach and, you know, do what you love. I actually had a very um, kind of a soul searching couple of years and it was in my mid twenties and I was very, um, I checked all the boxes of my life. I hit all the right milestones. I graduated from university. I got into a large corporation, had a job with great career prospects, got married, bought my condo. And I felt like, oh, I should be happy. But at the same time, I just felt like something was missing. There was this missing piece that I just don't know where to look for it. Um, and that just got me into ask myself a lot of questions such as what else is there to my life? Is this it? Just being able to check all the boxes. And what would it be like if I could feel absolutely alive every day? Um, and that prompted me to actually seek out some help from a career coach. And the funny thing is, I didn't know what coaching was at that time. And I walked into her office just expecting her to give me like a lot of wise um, suggestions about what to do to find my dream job. But instead, she actually asked me a lot of really deep questions about myself. And she asked me, if money is no object, what would your life be like? What do you want your life to look like? What would you be doing? And those things were something I never thought of before. Because I never thought my needs or my um, wants were important enough just to not prioritize them. So I walked away just feeling like I had such a life-changing conversation. And I realized I should really pl like place my own needs um, above what I was doing. And that's when I felt like, hey, you know what? What if I could do this for other people? What if I could inspire them to take actions and find what truly aligns with them? So I started to go to school and became a certified coach. Great. 
great story. And it's um, so it's kind of a, a a common theme to to kind of get into coaching or to become a coach kind of by having it experienced yourself and really feeling so much I don't know there <laughs> so so much better right away right and like to have that aha moment and yeah I want that I want to be like that all the time exactly. and then spread the joy yes right absolutely yeah mm-hmm. and it seemed to have been so profound um to have that mm-hmm. Um, experience of not doing things because maybe they're expected yeah, of you, right? But sure. because you actually want to do them. Exactly. Yeah. And that's something I just haven't thought of before. I think one of the reasons why I was like, I was like that was also because of being an immigrant and being a Chinese girl growing up. I had a lot of shackles put on me, like I should be doing this and that. And I need to do something practical and have that financial security because that's so important to somebody who is new to a country and just never really thought about my own needs. So that Mm -hmm. conversation really opened me up. And realize made me realize why I felt empty and what it is that's important to me Mm -hmm. yeah and I mean all these things that you said they were all important right you need to have feel secure and 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 have all these you know other aspects but it's like how does it connect to you and you know is that something that you want to right it's not not just by fulfilling expectations of someone else so Exactly. Great. Um, so who are you usually um, working with? Is there a particular area that you're mainly concentrating on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tend to attract clients who are looking to um, to really find their purpose, which is interesting because that's that was exactly what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, a lot of the time, what I realized is that a lot of the clients who – um, were lost and couldn't find their purpose was because they were held back by their fears. And it was actually not something that they realized when they were experiencing um, those self-limiting beliefs. And for example, I actually have my own personal kind of example as well in this. When I first started uh, coaching, I really wanted to get clients and I was very keen and I just put myself out there and did like a lot of things I everything I could possibly do to get clients and I felt like that need was actually driven from a place of fear and that fear was oh like what if I can't get clients and I can't realize my dream and therefore I need to uh you know, to, to make sure I don't offend anyone and I'll be really careful. And, um, so that energy actually um, came across to the other person. So that prevented me and helped me back from actually getting clients. Hmm. And funny thing is, as soon as I start to trust, Hey, things are going to work out and I am not going to be attached to the outcome, which was whether this person is going to become my client. And rather, I would be genuinely interested in this person's story and see what I could do to serve them. And interestingly, that's when the doors open and my coaching practice um, really took off. Wow. Great. And then I obviously have that awareness around it, too. And, you know, this is, I don't know, it's it's strange how that, how, like you said earlier, you had these self-limiting beliefs and then these are the the clients that come to you as well and you really relate um, um, to them. So, yay. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. So one of the things my coach actually told me was Mm -hmm. that um, you are your best client. (laughs) So (laughs) I firmly believe that. And the things I have struggled with, the things I've challenged with, and I felt like I attract the people who have experienced the same challenges and therefore actually make me a better coach for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And at the same time, you always um, learn something for yourself again, right? Um, Yeah. Going through these situations and you're reflecting back on you. For sure. Yeah. I'm inspired by my clients like (laughs) every day. Yeah. Um, So you mentioned um, people having... um, kind of self-limiting beliefs and this it always comes down to fear and fear um we just talked about before actually we hit the recording button is also linked to 
um, being courageous and how um, out of that you can become really confident and, and build up your self-esteem um, around that. Um, so I was just wondering if you can um, talk about that part a bit more about overcoming fear and um, and self-confidence building. I think the two definitely go hand in hand. The fear of, um, their most common fears I've seen and also experienced myself are fear of failure, fear of judgments from others, fear of being a disappointment. And because of having those fears, so a lot of the actions that people take will be very, um, very careful and they try not to, um, do too much, too many things outside of their comfort zone. And therefore, they always play small. And once they let go of that fear, they will be able to actually take risks. And once they started taking risks, and they would realize, hey, you know what, um, I could actually do this, which I never thought of before. And that give them that confidence boost. And similarly, my story is the same thing. Like I never thought I could have my own business. I was brought up to believe that I needed a secure job at a large company and I couldn't have my own business. And But once I tried, once I got my first client, I'm like, hey, you know what? I could do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yes. And like that also, you know, you can build upon that. You take small steps. You get the first, um, first steps outside your, your comfort zone. Um, and, um, have those successes, the small successes. And then you, Hey, actually that didn't kill me. So, uh, you know, you keep, you keep going. And, um, before you know it, you take higher risks and, um, a lot of the times it actually pays off. Right. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And you just flourish and you have that, that self-confidence. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, I think, um, um, one of the things that um, struck me from your from your bio is what you you said uh, you're um, helping to fearlessly inspire others to lead fulfilling lives. Um, I think that's so such a beautiful uh, phrase and sums that up quite nicely. Mm -hmm. That is my life purpose, and that's something I actually discovered through taking the coaching courses at CTI, the Coaches Training Institute. Um, there was a course on finding my purpose. And once I found that statement, fearlessly inspire others to lead fulfilling lives, I just felt like it really clicked. And that was the missing piece that mm -hmm. I was looking for. Wow. You find your puzzle piece. I did. <laughs> um, so um, for people who are, who are um, listening in right now and think that they have some sort of fear or want to discover if they have any, if they believe, hey, I know I'm fearless. Um, and, uh, you know, do you have some questions that you can uh, pass on to them and um, say to check in you know about their their fears or um, confidence building anything that you think you can give them on the way while they're you know listening in grabbing pen and paper right now <laughs> <laughs> yes. so that I can scribble the questions down and ponder over them in the next few days yeah um, for sure um, and you're totally right because a lot of people don't recognize that they have fears just like mm -hmm. I didn't know my um when I was bending over backwards to please a client I wasn't really I, I will I felt like oh I'm because I want to get this client I didn't think it was because of a fear that I was desperate I wanted to get a client because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to have my own business I wouldn't be able to get certified so it's really something for you to examine or for people to examine um, when you feel like this strong urge to do something or a strong urge to not do something, you ask yourself, where is this urge coming from? Is it from a place of fear or is it from a place of love? So that will help you determine if this is something that's from a place of fear mm -hmm. and therefore holding you back. So something you could ask yourself once you identify, hey, this is a fear, you could ask yourself, um, if this belief is true, for example, I, my belief at the time was I wasn't a good coach. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I asked myself, is it true? And the answer is, no, it's not true. I'm going through school. I know a bit about what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not a master. Um, however, I still kind of know what I was doing. So it's not true that I no knew nothing, right? So that helped. And also the second question would be, without that fear, who would you be? So that 
definitely helped me as well. So without fearing I'm going to lose someone, lose a client, I'll be more courageous with this person. I'll ask the tough questions. And those tough questions actually got my client to have that breakthrough. And therefore, I managed to get the client and the client will stay on with me. So Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just that the line, who would you be without that fear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Imagine, right? Yeah. Imagine that person. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And it could be you, not someone else. It's you who could be that person. Yeah, Right. exactly. What's possible that way. Great. Thanks for sharing. Um, and, um, everyone who's listening in will pop this up on the social media channel so you can, uh, everyone can chime back in and say what their answers were to that. Would be great to, to see what people come back with, right? Um, their quest, their answers to those questions and see how it maybe have, um, helped them throughout mm-hmm. the week or moving forward. Okay. Um, so what's a recent, uh, coaching situation or coaching relationship that left you? inspired or feeling proud is there something that you can share first off i want to say thanks to one of my clients who gave me the permission to share the scenario however i won't share her name to protect her confidentiality Mm -hmm. so she came to the call very sad and very down and the reason was one uh, a person that was very close to her was moving far away and permanently so she just couldn't um, cope with the fact that she was going to be apart from this person. And um, we sat down and I had her examine the source of, sources of her emotion, the sadness, where it's coming from, what is it really about, and had her experience it in her body. So identify the sensation. And for her, she felt like it was like a rock that was on her chest. And we examined the rock, um, and eventually, uh, as we went deeper into it, she actually uh, realized something that she didn't know before. She realized that she felt this sadness because she wasn't fulfilled with her life and her career, and because she didn't have that purpose. When when this important person was leaving her life, she felt like, "Ooh, um, I'm so lost, and I'm really sad." So as we talked a little bit more about that, I got her to really imagine um, what would it be, what, what would be possible? Um, like what are some of the things that she wants to engage with right now to explore other possibilities? And she started to become more hopeful and curious about, hey, you know what? Um, I, could pro- I could probably move to another city and um, take a risk um, rather than staying where I am. And she actually, we ended the call with her being very curious and just anticipating her future. So mm-hmm. I felt really touched. And, you know, she is starting the call with such a, um, you know, sad note and was able to emerge with uh, such strength and um, such uh, curiosity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it turned out to be um, pretty uplifting yes. at the end. Right? Yeah, okay. totally. And those scenarios are where I felt like, hey, I've, I chose the right profession. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Um, so, who would uh, who would usually seek you out? I know you touched on it um, earlier, but who are your kind of ideal uh, clients, or who would you be able to uh, to help out through coaching? My ideal client would be somebody who is really serious about change, about growth, and he or she could be lost um, or felt stuck in her or his current position and wanting to find a purpose in his or her life. I would love to help people who were in the same boat that I was a few years back. Mm -hmm. And a couple of things I also ask myself when I decide whether I want to take a client on is, is this person receptive to things I suggest like exercises, uh, visualization that I suggest. And second one is, does this person inspire me? Um, I feel inspired by my current clients every day and I want to have that feeling as well when I am coaching someone. So that's the second question. The third one is, um, is this person committed? So that's 
usually takes a couple conversations to figure out is this person, you know, does something that he or she committed in the coaching session. Mm -hmm. So I would say that those three things are what I kind of look for in a potential client. And um, if the answer is yes to all of them, I would love to Mm -hmm. help this person out. Okay, great. So um, you mentioned um, you need to be inspired by, by the person too. How can you how can people inspire you what's the you know what's the what's behind that being inspired mm-hmm. yeah so it's hard to put them into words it's like a feeling it's almost like a body sensation it's mm-hmm. like if i feel like my heart does a bit of a leap when i am coaching this person um so that almost tells me hey i think this is the right person i'm a very much um gut kind of person. I rely on my gut uh, quite a bit. And uh, also, I would say if this person is really serious about transformation or change, and I could feel that earnestly, and that makes me really want Mm -hmm. to serve them. Mm -hmm. So that inspires me to become an even better coach for this person. Yeah, it's nearly like... um the whoever seeks you out would really want to do it so there's a a matter of um maybe self-drive or motivation there but just he or she or them don't know how to get to that place right or figure it out that's obviously where you come in as a coach but that desire and the drive is there Mm -hmm. to do something and that is yes yeah Mm -hmm. okay so that's the how you can be inspired oh for sure right yeah i think partly because one of my top values is dedication and i am inspired by people who are dedicated inspired by people who are willing to grow and change Mm -hmm. Uh, okay yeah makes sense (laughs) makes total sense and uh, i i yeah i get a bit more on the you know how you can be inspired um through that and it's a bit more tangible Mm-hmm. Right, something that people can check up on themselves. So, yeah, am I that driven a person or motivated to actually do all that change? Will I? Am I willing to put in that work? To yes, make, to make it mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. Right, and uh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> what's your um? What's your coaching style or coaching approach? Is is there one in the first place or? Yeah, I like to think of my coaching style as velvet fist. So what that means... Intriguing. <laughs> yes. Intriguing. Velvet fist. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Explain. <laughs> sure, yes. Um, velvet fist is basically, if you picture a fist in a velvet, mm-hmm. and on the surface is very gentle and very... Um, very kind and nurturing Mm -hmm. but underneath is that if it's needed there is that fierceness and there is that courage to say things that could potentially offend my client uh, could potentially make me lose my client but it's for the good of the client so that's my style exciting Uh, (laughs) (laughs) okay there's some heat (laughs) Yes, I, I, but never actually uh, any bodily harm involved <laughs> or, you know, punching anyone, I guess. Uh, right? Maybe. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so be prepared. Whoever is reaching out, you know, you really want to, you know, do it and, um, um, and be um, willing to possibly face some hard truths. Cold, yes. cold hard truths <laughs> and because you're not afraid to call them out right yes yeah? mm-hmm. okay velvet fist okay <laughs> i'll keep it in mind <laughs> um you actually started by saying oh i love my job um why do you love your job what mm-hmm. what makes you love it yeah i could go on on about <laughs> this <laughs> uh the short answer is really um it very much aligns with my life purpose and my life purpose being fearlessly inspire others to lead a fulfilling life. Uh, And I feel like the best way to do that is through the means of being a coach. And I get to really see the impact I have on someone. And there's really nothing that makes me happier when I see that, hey, I've made an impact on this person. This person's 
uh, is having a hot moment, and therefore she's gonna change the course of her life. Um, so that in itself is just so rewarding to me. We're coming to the part where we're maybe even recommending some um, some things, and um, in particular, um, either. Um, I'd, I'd like you to either share a, a book that really inspired you or a quote that has been with you and maybe a short story around it, why that is. Mm. I have a quote that's very cliche and is still my favorite quote. Mm -hmm. It's when there is a will, there is a way. And the reason I love it so much, I think it's partly because I value dedication so much. And all my life, I... Um, I I really admire people when they have an intention in mind. They go after it. They do everything in their power to make it happen. So I um so therefore this quote has been like a, a cornerstone in my life, and it makes me just really happy to be able to abide by it most of my life, and uh, including having this business. So. Um, so that's definitely something that has been resonating with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes total sense. If you had that quote and maybe two others in a, a multiple choice questionnaire um, and has listened to the first, you know, few minutes of our podcast interview, I would definitely take that because, <laughs> because of everything that you've said. So it, it goes like full circle. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, that totally. <laughs> Um, and so uh, we're nearly at the end of this, but I have uh, three more questions for you, which I actually don't know um, which ones are going to be because they're all on a paper in a nice bag. And um, you're going to pull three questions out. You can't see which ones they are because they're all, you know, kind of scrunched up. And um, yeah, you can read them out one by one, answer them, and we'll see where we're at the end of this. Oh, that's I'll get, fun. I'll get the bag. I know. I hope it's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's see. So this is the bag. Off you go. Question number one. What is important to you? Hmm. For me, it, it's important for me to make a difference. That is the biggest value of mine. And... I feel like I'm doing that through coaching, which is um, something that really makes me happy. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is your dream? Another really serious question. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my dream. And playing uh, it big. Both yeah. questions are super, they're coaching questions. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is definitely something I would ask my client as well. <laughs> my dream is, I was thinking about it the other day, it will actually be potentially opening a coffee shop by the water in Vancouver where there are comfy chairs for people to read in and there are spaces for people to talk and I could even be there to ask some questions, maybe even coach. Uh, so just having that space. A coaching cafe. A coaching cafe. I'm cool. in. I'll, I'll bring my book. <laughs> yes. Count me and I'm, I'll be your first customer. Go oh, for that it. would be amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would love that. And uh, I just feel like in Vancouver, I could not find a coffee shop that had really nice comfy chairs or by the water. It's always one or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would love to have a space like that and where we have some really amazing conversations. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Also, if uh, someone who's listening to this right now uh, knows of a place by the water with comfy chairs, please uh, message us on social media. So we'll pass it on. I'd love to know that place too. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to question number three. All right. What inspires you? You Ooh. get all <laughs> the top coaching questions. I know, right? Yeah. What inspires me? I am inspired by by my clients, by um, by people who really try to make a difference, people who break through, and um, um, people who actually don't buy, don't go by the conventions of society, and they do what they want. They do that. They they become who they want to be without caring about what other people think. Mm -hmm. So they're doing so fearlessly as yes, well, right? Fearlessly. So it goes to uh, Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah. Again. Fearlessness has been my theme for the past year. It's something I've been actively working on as well. So yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It sounds um um uh, like one of my favorite quotes, something that is actually on uh my my mobile phone screensaver. And framed at home, um, 
is a quote by Cheryl Sandberg uh, called, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Oh, I love that. That's my, uh, that's my mantra. Wow. Yeah. It's beautiful. And it's been with me for the last, um, I'd say maybe three, three years or so now. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. And hence goes, coach me Vancouver. <laughs> correct. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> wow. So, wow. What a great uh, discovery. It's been lovely chatting with you. Yes. Um, you too, Nadine. Thank you. And uh, let's hope lots of people listen in and, um, you know, reach out to um, have a chat with you about coaching and yeah. how you can help them be more fearless and uh, really, really go for what their dreams are. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Nadine. Great. Thank you. Head over to coachmevancouver.com forward slash book to book an initial free coaching session with Joanna and find out how she can inspire you to lead a fulfilling life. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay curious. <laughs>